Well hello there folks, this is Lyage and welcome to a Monster Hunter Rise playstyle guide. In this series we will be exploring unique and interesting ways to play each of the game's 14 different weapon types. In each video I will be covering a specific build or playstyle for a given weapon that may just make it feel completely different. Whether you've played the weapon for 100 hours or are picking it up for the first time, you might just discover a cool new way to play. As a disclaimer, these videos will not be full weapon tutorials. I will be going over a few key techniques and combos relating to the particular playstyle, but to learn about everything a weapon has to offer, there are already some great tutorials out there. I am also not claiming that any of these playstyles will be the most efficient ways to play, but I have the hope that they will provide a fun change of pace for your hunts. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, the weapon for today's video will be the Heavy Bowgun. So the Heavy Bowgun is a weapon that I haven't really been able to get into since the revamp of Bowguns in Monster Hunter World. Now I do have a bit of a soft spot for the weapon ever since I mained it in Monster Hunter Generations where the weapon could be played like this. However, since Monster Hunter World, I've been struggling to see the weapon as more than a slower light bowgun without rapid fire. Thankfully in Rise, the weapon has started to reclaim its own identity, gaining the ability to charge its shots, but even with that, I had been struggling to find a heavy bowgun playstyle that really felt like it set the weapon apart. That is, until now. So I was just browsing the heavy bowguns, looking for one that carried an interesting variety of shots, and um... What's up with this ladybug gun? Does it just shoot everything? The thing that really caught my eye with this weapon was the fact that it fires all levels of sticky ammo with that weird little blue icon that I never really understood. This gave me the inspiration to see how it would work to center a build around sticky shots. So first things first, I wanted to test out the damage potential of sticky ammo with this cool ladybug gun. So here's the damage we get with a level 3 sticky shot. Alright, 90 damage and an instant KO on the dummy. That's not bad, but now let's charge up the shot and try again. Whoa, 161. That is a considerable damage boost. Because you have a rather limited capacity of sticky ammo, you usually want to make each shot count, and that gives you a good reason to charge your shots, which I think makes these shots a great fit for a heavy bowgun playstyle. So now let me show you what kind of build I am running to take full advantage of these sticky shots. First things first, we are running the Ladybug Mortar with its capability to load sticky ammo level 3 on auto reload. It also happens to load every type of basic damaging ammo as well as every status shot including the level 2s on auto reload. If you want to be versatile, this gun will let you adapt to all kinds of situations. On the armor skills front, we are running maximum attack boost which does substantially increase the damage of our explosive shots. Because the explosions from our sticky ammo also do heavy KO damage, we will be running level 3 slugger to capitalize on our KO power. Artillery is also a skill that gives us a nice flat damage boost as one of its effects is strengthening the power of sticky ammo which is a lovely 30% boost at level 3. Evade extender is a skill that probably might as well go in every build just because of how good it is. For Heavy Bowgun, its effect on your roll is particularly impactful. Just look at this. Finally, the Focus skill does in fact give a slight boost to your Bowgun's charge time. It's not too much, but you can see the comparison here. Because you probably won't be firing that rapidly, this skill might not be too necessary, so if you're struggling with putting the perfect set together, you are probably fine leaving this skill out. I do happen to have a point of reload speed on this set, but that just comes from my charm. It actually turns out that for this setup, you will not need any recoil or reload speed improvements. Allow me to demonstrate why. So I guess it's about time to understand what exactly the auto reload icon for the different shot types means. If you notice, when firing a shot that has the blue auto reload icon, you will reload the shot automatically. This is a pretty quick reload that allows you to keep walking, especially considering a shot like Sticky Level 3 usually suffers from high recoil and slow reload. And so I did a little bit of testing, and here you can see, with maximum reload and recoil reductions, this Level 3 Sticky Shot on Auto Reload has the exact same animation, 
meaning that recoil down and reload speed skills are absolutely not necessary. There is one thing to know about this however, after firing a shot you are forced to reload which could leave you open right after firing. In addition, if you are knocked out of the reload animation, you will have to manually reload your shot and this is where things get a bit ugly. Because we are not running any reload speed improvements, when we manually reload our level 3 sticky shot, we have to sit through this animation. As you can see, this is not ideal, but if you time your reload windows appropriately, the auto reload does a great job at compensating for these high recoil, slow reload shots. Now before we go further, I would like to do just a bit more min maxi comparison between heavy bowguns. Here I have the Rajong heavy bowgun, another one that can load sticky level 3. This gun at its max level gets a bit more raw damage than the ladybug gun, which means your sticky shots will do more damage. For an even more powerful option, there is also the Tigrex gun, but the Rajang one has good stats for both recoil and reload speed, so we will use it for our testing. Now let's test out a shot with this gun. As you can see, the recoil from the shot forces you to stop walking. When it comes to reloading, you have to stop moving as well, even if your reload speed is maxed out. However, the trade-off for auto-reload is that you are forced to reload after every shot. With this gun, you can reload on your own terms, which is worth something. Another huge benefit to the Rajang or Tigrex guns is that they can both load two sticky three shots, meaning that you only have to reload half as much. This is definitely quite a bonus. In the end, I think your choice of gun for this playstyle will come down to your preference. If you go with the auto-reloading ladybug gun, you will be doing more, faster reloads, and with the alternatives you will do less, slower reloads. For this video we will ultimately be running with the ladybug gun, and the final thing that sold me on it is the huge variety of ammo types it is capable of loading. In the demo hunt coming up you will see me switching to a variety of powerful ammo types to capitalize on all the KOs we get from our explosive shots. Before we jump into our demo hunt, let's briefly cover what switch skills we will be using for this playstyle. Now I will say, when it comes to this weapon, the options we have for switch skills aren't too inspiring. In the first slot we can either have the basic melee attack or a tackle. The tackle is kinda cool since it has super armor, so I have it equipped, but honestly I find myself rarely using either move. The second slot is where the most interesting choice is. We have counter shot or counter charger. For our setup, we will be running counter shot for a few reasons. The first is that because we will only be shooting when we have the perfect opening, increasing our shot charge times really doesn't matter a whole lot to us. The second reason is that I find counter shot to be much more useful defensively. With counter charger, after countering attack, you are wide open while going through the animation. With counter shot, you gain a huge backwards evade that helps you get clear out of range for most follow up attacks, plus the shot itself does great damage. In the final slot we can swap our special ammo for a version that heals but does less damage. This skill is one that kinda feels out of place on the weapon. It feels weird to sacrifice some of your best burst damage for just for self healing, especially when gunners tend to die in a few hits anyways. At least as of right now, since I haven't found a way to properly appreciate this healing version, we will be running with the default version for more damage. Alright, I guess it is now time to jump into our demo hunt. Right before we set off here I would also like to mention that a good choice of meal when running this playstyle is the Dongo Bombardier skill. This skill gives your sticky ammo shots an extra damage boost, think of it like having another level of the artillery skill. So once again we will be fighting against Rathian for this hunt. I feel like Rathian makes for a good benchmark when testing out a new build. Now we just need to make sure to line up our first shot here. Gotcha. And immediately we get a KO. Anticipating this, I loaded up my Wyvern Heart ammo to do some big damage during this opportunity. With that huge damage right at the start, Rathian is already mad, but we counter the second roar with our counter shot. Two 
two shots later, we have gotten a second KO. Without missing a beat, we will be firing off our cluster bombs to capitalize upon this opportunity. Because these bombs take a long time to reload, we will just cycle through our three levels to fire off as many as possible during this window. Right here I get a bit overwhelmed by Rathian's charges, but somehow when stuck in this corner, I manage to pull off a counter shot. With this second counter shot, we have already done enough silk bind damage to open up a Wyvern ride. Now we are getting close to running out of sticky 3 shots, so now would be a good time to cover an important technique I will be using. For this gun, it is very important that you do not fire your final shot in your inventory. Instead, what you want to do is craft more shots while you still have one left. This will let you continue to fire your shots on auto reload. If you allow yourself to drop to zero shots, you will have to manually reload your first shot after crafting more. By the way, I highly recommend assigning crafting shortcuts on your wheel for quick crafting. Here I have one shortcut to craft level 1 sticky shots and another to craft the level 1s into level 3s. Moving on for this KO, we will be using some high powered dragon ammo to deal great damage. That is if I don't keep selecting the cluster bombs by accident. Wow, that dragon ammo does some great damage. Phew! What a near miss after that counter shot. Even in situations where the monster attacks you after firing the shot, you still can dodge out of the animation pretty quickly. This is once again why I prefer the counter shot to the counter charger. Alright, now let's test out some of our lovely paralysis ammo that this gun can auto reload. Cool. Just two shots and we have a paralyze. Now let's chain that right into another KO. That's cute. Rathian thinks she can get away. I don't think so. Here, take one more shot for the road. And <laughs> we could hear that shot explode in the sky. Hey, Rathian, what are you doing bullying poor Arzuros? He's just trying to enjoy some delicious honey. Time to help him get some revenge. Gotta love that evade extender. I'm pretty sure that has saved me at least a few times now. During this downtime, I can just quickly craft up some more sticky shots. With good shortcuts set up, it's just a couple of clicks and you're done. Our shot of choice for this KO will be Piercing Dragon Ammo. This is another very powerful shot that the gun just happens to have on auto reload. Does this gun do everything or what? Hunt's over already. I'm pretty sure my dog stole the kill there, though. 
Alright, that is the end of this playstyle guide. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed and want to see more guides like this, please consider dropping a like on the video or even subscribing to the channel. I am still very much new at this, so I will continue to try my best to make improvements to these videos in the future. Going forward, I have a few more ideas planned out for videos coming up, but if any of you folks watching have additional ideas for builds or playstyles to potentially be covered in these guides, please feel free to share. So I suppose that's it for now, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.